Okay, my friends, it's Roger Spur from Mud Fossil University. This is Seeker, and they are showing about the muons and that Fermi Lab and everybody now agrees the standard model is not correct. And I have been showing these muons for five years or more. Now, let's see what they have to say. More than 20 years ago, a team at Brookhaven National Lab detected a missing piece in the standard model. A measurement they had taken to better understand the effects of the forces that shape our universe was off. So the international physics community came up with a plan. Take the measurement again with much more powerful instruments and see what sticks. Fast forward to April 7th, 2021, that highly anticipated measurement is... This was just last week. Now they're given their estimation of what these muons are. Finally in and it seems like the Brookhaven results weren't a fluke. This means that our current understanding of the universe may not account for every particle and force within it, and therefore may need to be entirely reworked. <laughs> yes, she's exactly correct. Let me show you what the rework requires. Before I tell you about it, let's see what they have to say from the physicists. So this experiment is looking at little elementary particles called muons. And what we really care about muons for this experiment is that they're like little spinning tops. They're like little magnets. As it turns out, muons are one of the most precise. All right, let me show you what they are and then we'll go on. All right, here's what they found out. And I've been doing this for 50 years. I show my research and I don't want to keep going over that. It sounds like I'm bragging, but I've been doing this for 50 years. I was calculating dipole molecular moments of potassium chloride 50 years ago because molecules will have a positive and a negative sensor, a lot of them. Some of them are nonpolar, but a lot of them have like a dipole moment is called. In other words, there's a positive end and a negative end. Let's leave it at that. Here's what CERN and all of them were looking for is this muon. And they could see it. They could see these particles, but they had no clue where they came from. They just, just what the hell is that thing? It's a black ball, did nothing whatsoever. And even with the Cheryankov radiation where it was cascading into another medium where it it's supposed to do something, it did nothing. The electron, though, ex exploded into showers. So this is uh, understood to some degree, but this particle that they saw I had no clue whatsoever. Well, let me tell you all about that particle, the muon. Okay, she says physics needs a complete rewrite. It absolutely does, and here is the complete rewrite. Done. Case is closed. These are electrons. Electrons are not just a negative concussive explosive part that conduct is, is a, the electrical part it has a dark matter part and that is the dark matter it is the muon it is the opposite of the electron portion it never explodes it never concusses it never emits it never absorbs that means it is dark matter these electrons make up protons and neutrons. There is nothing but electrons. There is no gigantic protons. A proton is, I think it's actually 1839 instead of 1837. I made it an 1840, I believe, is the neutron, but it's right in that area. And this allows for nuclear decay. You can lose a couple and you're still okay. You're still working there. You can add a couple, you're still okay. You got isotopes, same thing, add, subtract, you're still okay. You're right in the region, but when you get way off of this mark, then you get real radiation. You get explosive decay. That's, ra that's radioactivity. Now, two of these together, which are electrons, make a photon. The photons flow through the air and they concuss with things. And when they concuss, they form little bits of whiteness. And here is what we did for the experiment, which I'll show you in a second. We took red laser, well, we took lasers, different lasers, and pulse lasers. And then we shot it through venturis, which are two little round pins. And it forces the waves, which are ahead of the particle. And I'll show you this in a second. The particle is way back here. The wave is way out in front of it. As it forces itself to concuss through the venturi, the wave, a magnetic portion, goes through there and out and the black ball which is the dark matter which is gravity which is the muon 
goes around and reattaches almost instantly. Now, I will show you, this is the particle. I told you right here, that's the photon. These are electrons. One is concussive and one is non. There it is right there. And they're talking about spinning tops. That's the spinning top. And the reason it spins is this is the concussive part. The black parts don't, don't, don't do anything. They're just there. The ball bangs into another one out here, and it makes everything wobble and spin. And that's what they're talking about on the muons. I've been showing it for years. These are the spinning tops. The black balls are the muons. The white balls are the electrons. They're little bar magnets back to back. And as they come through, the leading electron, which is the power part, concusses and it just glows. The trailing one, in this case, is less glow, but that forces this to spin, and then it creates a spin of the whole thing. But these are the muons they're looking for. So, and I saw these in an experiment done by Rod Warren, and I, I just jumped all over this. And, and he worked with me for years. And, and these are the muons, and this is what they've been looking for. And I've been posting about this for six years. I knew what, what it was when I saw it. And I sent it to all these people, and, and, and apparently they paid attention and started looking into it, because otherwise this would never be known. Okay, that is the entire new atomic theory. <laughs> You're looking at the entire thing that you have to know, and that's it. That is the photon side-to-side -side electrons. An electron is a dipole. It has a positive and a negative.